Hey there, good morning team. Chemistry Coach coming at you. We are going over some stuff that you are going to be calculating all the time in lab. Well, almost all the time. For every experiment where we have an unknown assigned to it, which for my class is pretty heavy, I want to test you in lab on your skills and techniques. So I'll demonstrate and we'll talk theoretically about some particular techniques, say titrations or whatever. I'll demonstrate the skill for you. I will have you practice on a, you know, un, unknown unknown. So, hey, here's this, here's this liquid, here's this all. We know this is the true value. Have at it. And if you're consistently low or high, again, we've talked about systematic error. We'll have to figure out why you're consistently low or high. Something's wrong with the technique. <clears throat> I fix that up when we're comfortable with the technique. Then we move on to a real unknown, a true, and you have no idea what the true value is. And you go ahead and determine some parameters for that substance. I have the true value, so maybe I ran it myself or some trusty um, a stock room personnel ran it. Maybe it's an accepted true value in the literature. Wherever we get that true value, we'll compare that to your value. That's where the majority of your points are going to come in. All right, so how did you do? Let's find out. No different than when I'm, you know, shooting archery or throwing knives. I've got a target. Did I hit my target? Yeah, right? That's accuracy. This is how we're going to measure the majority of your points. So we need to be able to do the statistical analysis of your data. All right. So again, accuracy, pretty simple to look at. How close is your experimental value to a true accepted value, right? Literally, like if I have a bullseye, I'm aiming for the bullseye, I hit over here. I did not hit the bullseye. If you're playing darts, you're hit, trying to hit the bullseye maybe, and they got this concentric rings after it. Each ring is worth less and less points. Same for archery targets, right? So it's a, it's, it's a pretty simple quantitative way of measuring your skill. Um, and again, at least for my class, well over half your points are going to be in lab based on your values of accuracy. I'm going to show you how to calculate this and measure it. Um, and I'll have a grading scale for that. So you'll give me a number. I'll talk about what those numbers are in the next board, ways of measuring accuracy through error. And then we'll calculate your error, and I will go off a table and say, well, based on your error, you get this many points. Just like if you hit the yellow ring, you get, you know, three points. The red, you know, bullseye's worth 10. The white ring's worth one. So that's how we're going to test the specific techniques. Let's put some equations on the next board. Let's put some definitions in your brain. Let's let see whatever, you know, whoever's class you take, they, they may designate these with different letters, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but for this class, let's let capital C be the true or correct or accepted value, whatever it is that we find in the literature, or maybe I ran it myself, whatever it is. That's the that's the the true answer or correct answer. Good? Now normally for an unknown, given time, you're going to do more than one run. Sometimes you just do one run. That's okay. But ideally, you want to do multiple runs uh, and take it, well, one, to see if you're consistent. We'll talk about precision in a little bit. You might do four runs to see that one's way off. I'll show you a way uh, with the 4D rule to statistically eliminate an oddball run, right? An outlier. So let's take, we let's say we take the closest, you know, two, three, or four uh, values you had for multiple runs and average those. And that tends to minimize random error, right? We can get rid of systematic error because that's a technique issue. Random error, you can't get rid of that from training necessarily. We can minimize it though by doing multiple multiple runs. All right. So let's call that average A. Even if it's just one run, you know, technically not an average, but I guess it could be. Well, that divided by one. <laughs> But we'll call that A, and I'll give you some equations so you know what C is and you know what A is. We are going to express accurately, accurately, <laughs> accuracy. We're going to express accuracy mathematically using a concept called error. There's going to be two types of error we're going to look at. Absolute error, which you're probably familiar with, with you know shooting darts or something. How far are you away from the true value? You can literally measure it. And we're going to do another one called relative error. And I'll talk about why that's the one I'm going to be grading you on. So let's look at the first type of error, absolute error. All right, here's the easiest way of looking at error. We're going to take absolute error, and we're just going to take the true value, C, or correct value, 
minus your experimental value or average of multiple values. Just take the difference between them. Now we're going to take the absolute value of that so that it's always positive, right? If it's negative, just make it positive. So it really doesn't matter if you do C minus A or A minus C, as long as you take the absolute value of it, thus absolute error. Right? Literally, we can look at it and, and say, hey, we're shooting darts, shooting archery, throwing knives, whatever. We're trying to hit the bullseye. That's the true value, right? So let's say I throw an, a throwing knife at this thing, and I hit the throwing knife right here, right? Whack. Let's call that A, right? So in lab, maybe you did three runs on an unknown and averaged it. That would be your average value. That's where we hit it, right? Or in throwing knives, we just throw one knife. And then we can literally look and see how close these are together. So we can take this down and then we can just measure the distance between those, right? How far apart are they? Pretty simple. Obviously with this, you know, maybe this is 10, you know, five, three, two, and one points, whatever you do, if you're playing darts or playing games, but you get the idea. Just take the distance between them. Easy peasy, easy peasy. That will have units, so make sure when you're subtracting them, they're both in the same units. And when you're subtracting, you're limited by the largest absolute uncertainty, i.e. fewest number of decimal places. So keeping that in mind. Very rarely will I grade you on the absolute error in a laboratory. So we're going to have something uh, next called relative error. And the reason I'm going to typically grade you on relative error is what if I give people different unknowns, right? So maybe they're, you know, measuring the mass of something or the volume of something. Well, the bigger the value, right? So if, I, if, if I'm asking you to weigh this pen and another, another one to weigh this championship softball trophy, <laughs> that was a kickback team. Right? This is heavier than this. So the odds are you're going to have more error, correct? Right? The odds are very high that you're going to have a farther distance away. So maybe this is, you know, I have no idea. Say it's 400 grams and this is, say, 10 grams, right? So if you're off by, you know, one gram here, you know, that's not that great. If you're off by 10 grams here, that's not too bad. But this could be an error of 10 grams. This could be one. So you're like, well, the absolute error is horrible on this one versus this one, even though technically this might be the more accurate measurement. It's just you have a bigger unknown. So that would be unfair to have a grading scale for students just based on the absolute error, unless all the unknowns were the same or relatively the same. Then that would be fair. All right. But like I said, if I've got different values, the people with the larger values are going to have a larger absolute error. Can you see where that comes from? So I'm trying to make a, a level playing field on grades that truly tests your skill via your accuracy. So that's going to be the next one called relative error. Let's do that one. I'll put a star next to that one. You're going to calculate this all the time. So when we're looking at relative error, whenever you hear the term relative in chemistry, I want you to think divide by something. I say relative, you say divide by. I say relative, you say divide by. Dividing by something, we're scaling it. Um, like when we look at uh, masses of subatomic particles, we're going to look at, instead of giving you the, the absolute mass, you know, 10 to the minus 31st kilograms or some, some weird number with, a, a, you know, 0. 0.00000, I mean, the number's tiny. What we'll do is we'll take the mass of protons and the mass of neutrons and the mass of electrons and divide them all or scale them or make them relative to the mass of the electron. So a mass of an electron divided by the mass of electron would be 1. The mass of a neutron divided by the mass of an electron is around a little over 1,800. Same with a proton. The mass of a proton divided by the mass of an electron is a little over 1,800, which means protons and neutrons are about 1,800 times heavier than an electron. That's a little bit easier to look at than saying, the mass of an electron is blah, 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 times 10 to the minus 31st kilograms. And the mass of protons is 10 to the minus, you know, whatever kilograms. And you're like, ugh. So just give them the relative one. It's easier to think about. So making things relative, you know, like uh, uh, the, the masses of uh, the uh, atoms and things like that, different isotopes, they're all relative to or compared to uh, the carbon-12 isotope, which is defined. So you're going to see this all the time. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take the absolute error, which wouldn't be fair to grade you on if I gave you different unknowns, and we're going to divide that by the true value C. We're going to scale it by the true value. So the bigger your unknown, for example, we talked about if you're weighing this pen, if this is your unknown and this is my unknown, it'd be unfair to grade absolute error because I'm going to have a higher absolute error because my unknown's bigger. But if I take the absolute error and divide by the true value, I'm dividing by a bigger true value, right, which makes my overall relative error reduce, you know, it makes it a level playing field is what it does. And I and I will grade you on your absolute error. So you want to, if you want to put a star next to this one, every single unknown you have, you're going to be calculating your relative error, either you or me. Sometimes I don't want you to know the absolute, the true value of an unknown, because uh, I don't want the word getting out. It's amazing how everybody ends up getting the same values. That's why I like to give you different unknown values so the word doesn't get out. So let's just take the true value minus your a average of your unknowns, um, the runs on your unknown, divided by the true value, or just absolute error divided by C. The units will cancel out. So this is unitless. Right? No units. That gives you a fraction or a ratio, right? So if we multiply that by 100, that converts that to a percent. Remember, 100 is a, a, a percent is a parts per 100. So if you multiply it by 100, you get what's called percent relative error. If you multiply it by 1,000, you get what's called PPT or parts per 1,000 relative error. Depends on the experiment. Some experiments, the techniques are just more accurate than other ones. So I may grade you a little bit more difficult than I would with something that's not quite as accurate. And again, this levels the playing field if there's different values of unknowns. That's the main point. And now you know what um, making things relative means. You're dividing by a value, whatever that reference point is. In this case, it's the true value. Well, let's do an example problem to show you, one, how to track uncertainty because you've got a subtraction on top where you're limited by largest absolute uncertainty or fewest decimal places. And then you take that answer and divide by the true value. When you're dividing, you're limited by fewest significant digits. So a lot of students try to do this all in one step, and they get the number right, they get the units right, but they screw up the uncertainty. This is a two-step calculation. It's a two-step. Let me show you why. All right, this is the kind of problem you're going to be doing a lot in the chemistry labs. So let's say I give you an unknown liquid and, and say, hey, do three runs on this and take those three runs, measure the density, and average those three runs, assuming they're precise enough, right? So let's say, and I was I skipped that calculation. Let's say this is the average, it's a non-rounded value, 1.1563 grams per milliliter, good to three significant figures based on your measurements, okay? So that was the average of three of your runs. And then you bring that up to me, I check your work and say, okay, everything seems okay, calculations look good, here's the true value, 1.145 grams per milliliter. Remember, you can go grams times milliliters to the negative one power. That negative one power just means it's in the denominator. So it's grams over milliliters. Same thing. Just easier to write in one line like that. So here's the true value C. Here's your average of three runs or however many runs you do A. Calculate the percent relative error. So maybe this is using a graduated cylinder or something like that. So not super, you know, not as accurate as we could be. So percent's going to be good enough for this. Well, let's go ahead and calculate it. Write down your equation. Fumble. So percent relative error will be the true value minus the average value or the uh, absolute error, right? Divided by the true value times 100, right? We're going to take that ratio and then we're going to convert it. Well, let's write those values in there. So what's the true value? 1.145 grams per milliliter. And I'm going to subtract the average value, 1.1563. Pop that in there. I'm going to take the absolute value of that. So that would be the absolute error. And you could calculate that separately in step one if you wanted to, and then, and then plug it in. Let's divide that by the true value, which was 1.145 grams per milliliter. And then we're going to multiply that by 100. Woo! Ran out of room there. There. 
So C minus A divided by C times 100. Take the absolute value. So it should be a positive. It has to be a positive value. Do you see why we have to do this in two steps? So let's do that subtraction first. So let's pop that in our calculator. Let's take 1.145 minus 1.1563. I get negative 0 0.0. 113. So I'm going to toss that negative sign because I'm taking the absolute value of that. And I'm just going to write 0 0.0113 grams per milliliter. Apples minus apples gives you apples. Well, where do we put our dashed line? This is good to the thousandths place. This is good to the hundredths place. Well, the hundredths place is a larger absolute uncertainty, so we're going to be good to the hundredths place. Or you can go three decimals, two decimals, Limited by fewest decimals, that'd be two decimal places. So one decimal, two decimals. So I'm going to pop, whoops. I'm going to put my vertical dash line right there because I'm limited to two decimal places. Now we'll divide that by the true value. And we're going to multiply that by 100. There you go. So that's the first step. Do you see, now we're dividing. We're going to have one significant figure in the resulting absolute error and four sig figs here. This 100 is exact. So I'm going to end up with one significant figure. That's very hard to do in your head here. <laughs> That's why you have to do this in two steps. Two steps. Two steps. Over 20 plus years of teaching, my friends, and people screw this up. Students constantly screw up their uncertainty on it. They just try to, well, I guess we're just trained to rush through the calculation as fast as we can in mathematics because they don't track typically in mathematics uncertainty. But chemistry, you got to slow it down a little bit. I think it doesn't take too much time. So let's take 0 0.0113 divided by 1.145 equals... That gives me the ratio. I'm going to multiply that by 100 because I asked for percent relative error. And that's what I get. A whole bunch of digits. Right? 0.9868995. I don't need all those. I only need one significant figure plus two non-significant ones. So that's going to be 0 0.9. Leading zeros don't count. I'm going to put my vertical dash line there. Add two more. Do you see how the units cancel out here? Oh, another fumble. I'm slippy fingers today. So grams per milliliter cancels out. That should happen every single time. Um, so I'm going to round this to one sig fig. So is that closer to 0.9 or 1? Well, it's closer to 1, right? Because that's higher than 5. So that's going to round up to not 1.0. We're only getting one significant digit. 1% error. So let's say, you know, my grading scale, anything below 1% is a 10 out of 10. Anything uh, between 1 and 1.5% 1, 1. would be like a 9 out of 10. So you may, I always grade you on your non-rounded value. So that, I give you a handshake. I give handshakes for perfect scores. I'd be like, yeah, boom, boom, boom. You're like, boom, what a boom, what a boom, perfect. If you miss it by half a point, Right? If you get like a 9.5 out of 10 or something like that, I'll go like this. I'll go, yeah, oh, so close. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, <laughs> you got to motivate you somehow, right? So common, I just want to make that point. Make sure you're always tracking uncertainty in your calculations and chemistry and your units. What a bing, what a boom. Accuracy is easy.